Hi everyone and welcome to the D Heart House. My name is Alicia and I'm your host of this crafty channel here on YouTube. Um, today is September 28th, Saturday, and I know that fall season has technically already begun. It started on Sunday or Monday, depending on how you count the start of fall. But yeah, I'm a week behind, so whoops. <laughs> it's been a busy time. I teach for a living and we just started classes back up this week. So it's been very busy getting ready for students. Uh, and now that I've met all of my students and we've, you know, um, we're starting to fall into a routine now, but the first week is always a little bit up in the air because not everyone knows what's going on and where to be and where to find everything so yes <laughs> but now it is the weekend and I definitely feel like I need to touch in touch base with you all about my fall making plans and I totally intended to have this up before the fall season started but you know life life stuff. So here we are a week late. <laughs> so I do have um, three or four things that I do want to make during this fall season. And here I go putting a bunch of stuff on the list, but I'm pretty confident this time. So <laughs> let's start off with the first item on the list, which is a poncho. So I'm not typically wearing a poncho. I'm trying to think of when I've ever worn a poncho. Maybe when I was in high school, I wore a poncho. Uh, so throughout my entire adult life, I haven't worn one. But I saw this granny square poncho by Hannah Cross when I was going through Ravelry. And I really like that it has sleeves. That for me was the whole thing about this garment. So um, I have seen like last fall and winter season, I've seen folks wearing like kind of baggy things with really tight sleeves. So it has this like poncho look to it with sleeves, if not exactly like a poncho with sleeves. And so I just thought this was really cool. Also the color choices in the sample picture, you know, pattern photo color choices are really great for for fall so uh, it is a crochet pattern and I haven't looked through too many details of it of hook sizes and whatnot I think I might have to do a little adjusting for gauge but uh, worsted weight yarn and uh, the pattern is you can purchase it and have an ad free PDF experience with the pattern or you can view it for free on the blog. So uh, I'll have a Ravelry link to the pattern in the description box if you want to check that out for yourself but I'm going to go off of the free <laughs> the free offering on the blog post and go through ad, the ad experience and that's fine with me, but uh, yeah, it seems like a pretty basic construction. The everything is crochet in the pattern. I did look through a few project pages of the individuals who have made this pattern already, and some folks had some suggestions about the sleeves, and I'm thinking right now maybe my plan is to knit the sleeves instead of crochet them because it's going for like a ribbing effect and I think I might just do that I know that on my I made a crochet cardigan and for the ribbing on the sleeves that's what I did is I um I knit it the ribbing portion so I'll probably just do the same thing other than that um, I'm not purchasing a kit for this, so I'm going to 
stash dive for colors. So I'm going to need to spend some time picking a nice palette for this that will work with my skin tone and my wardrobe and the goal would be not to purchase any more yarn for this project but if I found like oh, I really need like this color to tie the rest of them together I would be willing to go buy one <laughs> color uh, but I'm hopeful I can just stash dive so uh, yeah so a crochet item a poncho not my usual go-to but this really caught my eye and I'm excited to give it a try so numbers two and three on my fall making list are to finish a couple of garments that I started at the beginning of the month so summer wound the summer weather here in Washington Western Washington uh, kind of settled down a lot late August early September and it started to go back and forth between 80 degree weather and 60 degree weather and now that it's September's almost over we've definitely whittled out the summer weather well I don't know what it was but I was scrolling through I think it was Pinterest and I saw a bunch of po oh that's what it was I have a bunch of pins I, I named a category yarn and it's just anything that had to do with crochet or knitting or weaving or anything with yarn went in that category and I thought oh my god I have been filling this up for years with with things that inspire me and it took a while but I scrolled all the way down to the very beginning of that category and I started scrolling back up slowly like taking it all back in like when I first started using Pinterest these are the things that inspired me and how has that changed and how has that changed and that was a that was a really fun exploration actually but I got to see a bunch of posts where there was a stitch pattern that really baffled me when I was getting back into knitting. I didn't know how to make it. I was determined to figure it out. Someone had actually posted a video or something of how to do this stitch, like a really quick short video, and I found it. And I thought, oh my gosh, I want to make a sweater in that stitch. So. I cast on a sweater in a two color broken seed stitch and I am really enjoying this knit and I'm super excited for this garment to be finished it is not finished all right but this is one of the items on my fall making list. Uh, so I am, for this pattern, for this garment, I already had in my library the So Faded Sweater by Andrea Mowry. And I have knit that like three times, I think. I really like it. It's well written. Uh, pretty basic raglan. The back of the neck is taller than the front. There's a little bit of shaping in that, so that was nice, but yeah, it's pretty basic raglan. I've obviously modified it to incorporate this two color broken seed stitch, which is not a part of the so faded pattern. And yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to call these projects, but I have this one. This is uh, going to be a pullover sweater. This is, uh, I'm knitting it out of fingering weight yarn. In fact, this is Knit Picks Palette. The two colors I'm using, I have this beautiful, dark, rich green color, and then this light tan color. So the green is Aurora Heather, and the brown is hair heather hair is in like a rabbit hair so yes 
So this is on my fall making list to finish this. Um, it is top down, so I'm able to try it on as I go. I've been doing a lot of measuring, um, some blocking, which is why you can see some kind of stark lines coming across here is because I, I blocked it down to there and then I picked up and, and I'm knitting past the arms and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I, ha I did have to rip back a little bit because I had overcompensated for the arm opening. So I did rip back and then rejoin it in the round again. But I'm not having to rip back as much as I had to for my summer knits. Thank goodness. But uh, I was having so much fun with this one in the fingering weight and the pullover version that I got really excited and went, oh, I also want to cast on a worsted weight version, but do a cardigan. And so that's number three on my on my fall making list. So the edges here are curling over. So it's not going to be an open front cardigan. It is going to be one that I can fasten shut. I'm still brainstorming how I want to fasten this if I want to install a zipper or if I want to do like traditional buttons with buttonholes that pop through and they're round or if I want to do like the oblong wooden buttons or uh, whatnot. I'm going to figure out those details later, but <laughs> uh, there will be some kind of closure happening here. And I am using acrylic yarn for this. I have a lot of worsted weight acrylic yarn in my stash. And black and white is pretty, you know, neutral basic. Should go with a lot of things in my wardrobe. So I'm using uh, Karen One Pound for both of these yarns. Uh, one of them is white and the other one is black. Or sorry, dark gray mix. <laughs> but it pretty much looks black. Uh, so on this one, the main color is white. And on this one, the main color is green. Um, it does change kind of how the stitch pattern appears if the light color is the main color versus the dark color is the main color. And I just, I was having fun playing around with that. So, uh, yeah, they're both pretty far. You can see I've split for the sleeves. I'm onto the body. This one's uh, obviously going faster because it's worsted weight yarn, so each row is just progressing me faster here. But uh, yeah, I'm doing a lot of trying on as I go. I'm taking notes about measurements and things in the hopes of using this as a little bit of a guide on future garments. But yeah, I would like to finish both of those in the fall season, which ends... In December, I had to look it up. In December, it's before Christmas. I'll put the date on the screen because I can't remember. And then the fourth thing on my fall making list, I guess I'll officially put it on my list, is at least one pair of socks. So I love sock knitting and I feel like I've been neglecting that a lot. I've been putting more focus on garments, which is really fun, but uh, I would like to make sure to kind of pencil in at least one pair of socks this season. So I'm leaving it open to the pattern, the yarn, uh, but just, just knit a pair. So that is my fall making list for 2024. And if you would like to share what you have plans to make this fall season, I'd love to hear about it and just drop a comment down below and kind of start that conversation. That would be amazing to hear what you have. Are you going to try poncho or maybe a new craft or something like that? Uh, yeah. So until next time, I hope that you stay safe, stay healthy, and that you enjoy your crafts, whatever they may be. Bye.